Well, we're not making a huge amount of progress lately. Just uh, it's been the holidays. We've had family in town, and we've actually uh, pulled the wiring harness back out from Painless just so we could get it nice and clean. We're going to re rethread it. But I thought I would kind of show kind of where we're at, um, just with some of the things that uh, we are progressing with. Um, because of the configuration of what we did with this 302 um, Ford V8, you can see I've got very limited amount of room. I've got about, that represents about an inch of clearance between the water pump head and then my pusher fan that we ended up with in the front here. And the reason we did the pusher, we ended up with a 16 inch uh, 2200 CFM spall fan. The reason we did this is simply because, uh, I guess I can't... Uh, um, get the camera to zoom or to focus, but VA 18 dash AP 10 slash C dash 41 S to 12 volt volt. The reason we did this is because I was allowed to have a little bit more room coming forward up into this space here before the grill. Also, it allowed me to push the radiator back a bit, as you can tell, uh, in order to have room for the headlights. So we really kind of, the way we did this ended up with this being, you know, kind of how we're going to have to go. Now, I want you to notice this is sitting on a, a 1x6 right now, just kind of roughly have it in place. Um, ultimately, what will end up happening, do this with one hand, is that this entire setup is going to sit on this bracket that we fabricated. <clears throat> and that bracket will sit further down into the frame rails. So this is a JEGS uh, radiator, 24 inches wide by, I believe, 19 inches tall. It was for a 19, late 70s, early 80s Bronco with the 5 liter V8 in it as well. So cooling-wise, I should be okay. Now, research-wise, this is just the best combination that I could come up with to fit the gap that I have, obviously, to work with. So... Just bear in mind, you may come up with your own. <clears throat> uh, hoses right now, we're just kind of experimenting. I, I had a score of a day at the uh, um, junkyard yesterday, just pulling inch and a half and uh, inch and three quarter uh, pipe <clears throat> off of, and uh, tube rather, hosing off of uh, different vehicles. I also was able to get to a Land Rover Discovery that had not been touched yet and got uh, a lot of goodies off it yet. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, cold air intake will go right here. Gives us a little bit of room to manipulate it and possibly put some kind of a resting bracket, bracket here as well if needed. Um, some of the other cluster that we're seeing here, um, this is the proper ignition coil for the engine of this era and then everything else, and of course, uh, uh, just off of a, this came off of a, a junkyard vehicle the other day too. And so now I've got the right line running to that versus the original. Uh, ignition coil that we had on the truck earlier. Um, obviously, you can tell when I move this board, the bracket that we fabricated for the radiator will fit down in there. Here's a better look at that bracket that we did. We'll just do some self tapping screws <clears throat> and it'll sit and just fits exactly in between the um, frame rails. Um, <clears throat> We, when we got the frame powder coated, went ahead and got some of, got some uh, aerosol versions of the uh, paint in a can so that we could uh, paint that ourselves. The other thing we did yesterday too is when I got to that Land Rover Discovery is I was able to get um, a new bracket for the power sharing reservoir. Um, extra hoses are now kind of set in place. Also, for whatever reason, I had misplaced one of the... Um, bolts for the uh, power steering linkage and while there I noticed that the uh, Land Rovers actually have a little bit of a skirt <coughs> that goes on so we were able to pick that up as well so all these things will be going in here soon and we got to this Land Rover so, so early that we actually were able to pick up uh, um, a couple of a couple of logos that were still on the back of the trucks so that's how early we got to the rig but um, we're at the point now where we're just trying to you know, design how we want this dash assembly to look. Um, obviously, the EFI computer on that side will get a little plate in front of it to cover it up. And we're we'll trying to keep things as stock looking as possible, but obviously, this side will be where we have an accessory panel added in uh, to uh, give me some of the accessories that I'd like to have on this rig to make it a little more modern. But um, in any event, it's kind of where we are today. But that's uh, the radiator assembly that we ended up with with the JEGS and then the uh, SPAL 16 inch. 
2200 CFM pusher um, is basically what I'm limited to use. And then, of course, headlights will be uh, the next step. Of course, uh, truck light has those very expensive LEDs that have a very, very low profile, but man, are they expensive. So uh, that's my next <laughs> search. Otherwise, um, I might do some adjusting to the back of the housing because I think I've got possibly just enough room to, to have a couple of different options there. Um, obviously, one of the things that's missing is we still have not fabricated how the steering column will mount to that bracket. It's just on with zip ties. But what we do know now is that the original series column and the P38 column, which one sleeved inside the other, we now know that we now know that's exactly where to weld that. So when we get this back over to the shop, we'll take care of that. <clears throat> My uh, brake lines are run very, very sloppy right now. I basically just made one turn in them and, and got them kind of tested over here so I could try the fender out the other day. And um, those will come back out and get more professionally installed here over the course of this next week. Um, but otherwise, um, it's a lot cleaner when I get that out of the way. I think we're going to find a place to mount this ignition coil basically about that length away. So arguably we'll take a lot off of that bracket and possibly find a home for the ignition coil maybe over here or wherever I can get it to reach to. But uh, in any event, slow progress but progress. Let's take one more look at how we're going to end up doing the tie rod linkage. So we have cut the tie rods ends about seven inches back from where they assemble. And of course, what you have here is back in this section of the tie rod, that's where everything can spiral in. That's the right hand side. And then, of course, here's the left hand side. The P38 power steering arm or the pitman arm rather, is uh, um, further out than the original was set up. And so the tie rod arm is, is too short. So what we've done is we have cut each end seven inches from the end. That's just the number that I decided to do. And we went and found a pipe that has the same inner diameter as this pipe's outer diameter. Now, arguably, this is not going to be the pipe that I stay with, but I got it cheap. It happens to be the inner diameter is the same, so I can I can go in and go ahead and start to, to grind and buff this up to where it will fit and sleeve into it. And then we're going to try to, if that works well, we're going to go ahead and try to find a, a, a thicker pipe with the same inner diameter. But basically what you can see here is going to happen is that, if you can imagine this, this will sleeve this pipe will sleeve into the one that I'm, the, the large 30 inch pipe here, and this over here as well will sleeve into that. And in doing that, we'll weld that exactly in position, and then I've got my tie rod um, linkage taken care of. So that's kind of one of our simple little projects that we have left. You know, I want to make one other comment too, just, I know it's, <laughs> If you're watching this now and you've already started in your project, we went with the advanced adapter engine mounts. And honestly, what that did is that really limited. Unfortunately, the uh, driver's side and the... So the driver's side F-150 manifold probably could work. But where you end up in a problem with is that if you look at where the engine mount is here on this side, it's in the wrong location for how a Falcon or an F-150 wants to dive down. So you just you just have to have a custom header built and that's basically where we're going to end up. Okay, so we've got the radiator bracket uh, C-clamped in place and give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. Um, you know, my, my got two and a half inches here to play with. And the bracket is C clamped in place, like I say, being held true. And so looking at, you know, really how close these tolerances are for what we're dealing with, I do I could come forward a little bit more if you look at the fact that I've got some gap. Where's my finger? I've got some gap right here, so I could bring this whole thing forward, but my headlights and what I've got here are the biggest concern. I agree with I'm really close. I get the better lighting. Really close in here 
this is obviously a little too tight um, so I'll probably let it come forward about a quarter inch and I'm gonna leave myself about five eighths of an inch of clearance between the radiator and the water pump that may not be beloved by some mechanics but you can kind of see the fine line I'm walking here um, the clearance up top and we we went ahead and made this the same elevation as uh, this bead here so that I can go ahead and bring across a um, uh, plate there and weld straight across for a bracket that I can make for the um, attachment there. Now the interesting thing about this is the gap that I have here actually makes me rather curious. Where did it go? Uh, the linkage that obviously the came standard I went ahead and did away with but I, I actually could mount this in here which is a discovery hood release and get my hood release possibly back in we'll just have to see but certainly right now it looks like if I do go ahead and fabricate some kind of a plate right here I'm gonna have that as an option to at least consider so anyway that's where we're at we'll wrap up the video here with you know how that um, bracket is being put in place or whatever we want to call it the mount for the uh, <clears throat> radiator and now I think it's probably pretty clear why we didn't weld it onto the frame before we powder coated simply because I mean this is I like having this luxury right now of being able to put it pretty much exactly where it needs to go now so anyway well when all is said and done at the end of the day this is how it all came together Cut the back of the black housings off, and that's just the only option I really had. So, we're going to find out what kind of headlight we're going to go with. And the reality is, give me a more detailed comment. Uh, the original headlights and the Hellas that I had, unfortunately, are both too deep. So, I look like I may very well be spending the full cash on the uh, truck lights. Uh, unless I can find something low profile.